Hello, I'm Chris O'Flaherty, Product Manager with Oculus. I'm here to talk about the Pentacam AXL. Pentacam AXL is the newest model of Pentacam from Oculus, and it's the only device in the U.S. that combines Scheinfluke technology with optical biometry. I'll start by demonstrating the ease of use of the device. Normally we do uh, the scan in the dark room, but in this case we'll go ahead and use the cloak. I'm just lining up the device at this point. And the nice thing about this is once I have the proper alignment, the device will automatically start the scan. Now the device is taking the axial length measurements. It actually takes six axial length measurements in succession. And now I'll go ahead and proceed with the high resolution Scheinflug scan. And now the scan is complete. So with the single scan, the Pentacam AXL gives us a lot of information. It does give us the actual raw shine fluke images so we can qualitatively look at the anterior segment. And we can actually look at 25, 50, or 100 slices of the anterior segment and really get a picture of the cornea, anterior chamber, iris, crystalline lens, uh, the angles and everything like that. We also have some statistical analysis that we do. This is our fast screening report. The fast screening report takes several of the Pentacam measurements and shows them against normative data. So the green curves that you see on the screen, that is a distribution of measurements for a normal population. The red curve is a distribution of measurements for a pathological population. And then you see the black line, which is the patient, and you can see how they relate to those two populations. And this can be helpful for quickly assessing to see if there are any abnormalities uh, that could potentially be pathological. This is good for detecting occludable angles. It's good for uh, detecting early ectasia. It's also good for detecting corneal opacities such as corneal edema or scarring. This is an example of a patient with occludable angles. And as you can see, their chamber angle, chamber depth, and chamber volume are clearly in the red. Another popular display is our four maps display. This is a common configuration where we have the anterior curvature map, we have the anterior corneal elevation map, we have the posterior corneal elevation map, and then we have the corneal thickness map. Again, this is a common configuration, however, you can select any four maps that you would like to be displayed. This is an example of a patient with regular astigmatism. On the curvature map, you see the nice symmetrical bow tie-like shape. On the elevation maps, you see truncated figure eight-like pattern, and on the corneal thickness map, you see good corneal thickness. Display also gives you several measurements such as keratometry, pachymetry, anterior chamber information, and horizontal white-to-white -white measurement. Here's an example of a patient with early ectasia, and what we see here is central island of elevation on the posterior elevation map. This is something that you would not be able to see on an anterior surface topographer because this is happening early and it's only seen right now on the posterior surface. Here's an example of a more advanced keratoconus and we see asymmetry on the curvature map like you would expect, uh, abnormal anterior and posterior surface elevation. You also see a thin cornea. Here's an example of a patient with pellucid marginal degeneration. We see that classic kissing birds pattern on the anterior curvature map. We do see some abnormalities on the anterior elevation and posterior elevation. And then we do see some inferior thinning on the pachymetry map. Another display that's good for risk assessment of ectasia is our Bell and Ambrosia display. The Bell and Ambrosia display takes several individual indices and does a regression analysis to give us a final D or a risk score for ectasia. Uh, it takes several things into consideration. One unique thing about the Bell and Ambrosia display is the enhanced reference shape, which accentuates any kind of ectasias and makes it easier to detect. We also look at pachymetric progression, which is unique uh, to the Bell and Ambrosia software. Pachymetric progression is not looking at just how thin the cornea is, but the rate that it gets thin as you go from the periphery to the thinnest point. Here's an example of a patient with early ectasia, and again, we see some abnormalities on the maps there. Those are elevation maps, and the ones that are turning yellow and red, those are the posterior elevation maps. We see some abnormalities in the pachymetric progression. Uh, we also see that several of the indices are turning yellow or red, indicating that this is an ectatic.
location. A new feature from the Oculus Penicam is our keratoconus progression display. This is designed to look at several measurements over time, including anterior curvature, posterior curvature, corneal thickness, and best corrected visual acuity, and look at these over time in order to assess whether or not the patient is progressing. For preoperative evaluation for cataract surgery, we have our cataract preop display. This gives us our anterior surface curvature. It also gives us total corneal refractive power for looking at how the posterior surface of the cornea affects the total power of the cornea. And this can be very helpful for toric IOLs. We also look at higher order aberrations, which is important for assessing not only corneal quality, quality of vision, but it's uh, very important for multifocal IOLs or extended depth of focus IOLs. We also look at spherical aberration and we look at what we call cord mu, which is related to angle kappa. Uh, and that's also important for any kind of multifocal or extended depth of focus IOL. Uh, with the Pinacam AXL, we've added not only the axial length, but we do have our IOL calculator built in as well. The IOL calculator is good for any type of eye, whether it's a normal cornea, whether it's uh, post-refractive, or for corneas with astigmatism where you would like to implant a toric. So we do have our toric calculator as well. For normal corneas, we have the Holiday 1 formula, SRKT formula, the Hoffer Q formula, and the Haggis formula. We have also recently added the Barrett Universal 2 formula. For toric IOLs, we have the Barrett toric calculator, and we have also recently implemented the Savini toric calculator, which is designed to utilize total corneal refractive power. So as you can see, the Pinacam AXL gives us a lot of good information for general screening, screening for refractive surgery, management of keratoconus, uh, preoperative evaluation for cataract surgery to help determine what the best lens design for the patient is. Also, we can go one step further with, with the AXL and do the IOL calculations themselves for any type of eye. So thank you for listening and have a great day.